we need to make character number two. And remember, there's a 25% chance that this party will have a Volos race. That is how we're going to begin, by rolling a percentile. <clears throat> Romantic Day says, Japanese people love to practice their English with foreigners. Uh, since, yeah, we are having a, a language discussion, I did find that to be the case when I was in Japan. Um, as, and again, especially in a big city, or if you're in an environment like um, the subway. Norton calls out to the lich. You enjoying the river, friend? Well, King, are you? <clears throat> Delcorn, I'd like to learn Arabesh and Gauld. I think they're quite useful in everyday life. There you go, Norton. The figure just sort of turns its head in the water and, and says, It's alright. <laughs> it's kind of relaxing. <laughs> 32. We have a normal PHB race for this character. Yeah, uh, Ivlon, uh, Crit was just talking about the, uh, was just talking about the experience in there. Uh, he fought a giant crocodile and then rode a dinosaur afterwards. You know, besides the shrieking emptiness and my soul hungering to end all life in that jazz, but that's just part of my medical condition. <clears throat> well, King, do you want the, you want the Noll to, uh, to Nolly paddle out to you and kind of you two float down the river together? <clears throat> Since we have a PHB, or actually now we need to roll male, female, or multi-classed. 87 is male, just shy of a multi-class character. D10 is going to determine which fantasy race we're dealing with here. Number 7, we have a half-elf. Who favors which heritage? Evens favors the elven portion, whatever the elven half is. Wood, high, drow, um, maybe even um, Aladrin. <clears throat> Chemiston says my father tried to teach me Korean. Just, it wasn't, he didn't teach it enough to be successful, or you, you have the basics, Chemison. Uh, can skeletons swim? I'll just float. Yeah, come in here and we'll count stars. <clears throat> Norton walks into the slow run of the river. This is quite nice. King says, my wife might take offense. That or my soon to love pixie who burns with fiery jealousy. <laughs> yeah, I don't think Tycho's in here, huh? No, we haven't had any. We haven't had any uh, any callouts or kind of like the hey, listen, I'm jealous. <laughs> <clears throat> so a knoll, a knoll, and a lich are floating down the river. So, Norton, what led you to choose Null Life? <laughs> uh, let's roll alignment. <clears throat> 2D uh, 100s. 98, 26. We have an evil character. We have a lawful evil character. That means if we get a paladin or cleric, uh, that could open up some interesting avenues for us. Our lawful evil male half-elf who favors his elven heritage... is going to be level um, level four. All right, we have kind of a low level party here.
Dark Wolf, you know, meanwhile, as, as the Lich and the Knoll are floating down the river, contemplating their place in the, the grand scheme of things, the Sadawu limps back to Kitty Pendia to color and have a juice box. <laughs> so we're, we're having a uh, we're having a, a we're speaking of languages right in sort of an out of character sense of you know Persian and Korean and Japanese and all that and and in our in our side RP we're having this uh, this very existential what does it mean to be a lich or what does it mean to be a null? <laughs> Norton looks at the lich and says, keep this PG-13, Mr. Bister. <laughs> and then uh, Dorgrim, the, uh, Dorgrim the naturalist here, is creeping through the bushes on the side of the, uh, on the, side of the riverbank, looking, to, uh, looking into a scrying sensor and, uh, and narrating to us the, uh, the, the origin. Is he's, he doesn't want to disturb the, the natural act going on in front of us. <clears throat> you know, Kitty Pendia is a good place to get a snack and take a nap. All right, level four, he does get a um, the possibility for a feat, and let's see if he gets one. 29, nope, we're going for a stat bump. Now let's fill in on a D13 what his background will be. Three. Ooh, a criminal or a spy. They do have a D8 for origins. Well, I put number eight here, but we'll fill in the number by rolling a D8. Origin seven. I don't know what that means, and it doesn't matter. It's a placeholder. We'll come back to that. We're then going to roll 2d8 for personality traits. Uh, so we got 6 and 6 twice. We'll put 6 down, but we, we kind of need other numbers than that. And 6 again. 3 6s. And 3. Okay. Well, whatever 6 is, this person's really leaning towards it. But has a splash of 3. Now let's roll 3d6 and add those for the ideal bond and flaw. 5, 4, and 1. <clears throat> Very good. Uh, Kimison asks, since I'm very new to this, what is the Awoos? Um, Dark Wolf, would you like to answer Kimison's question on what an Awoo is? Dorgrim spends most of his time in his in his great library monitoring the multiverse and taking notes. <laughs> Drawings and etchings and Volvo Kittypendia is the best place to join the ranks. Bubonic's hoping for not a bard? Well, I'll hit that golden D12 and we'll find out. King says at Norton, I used to think I wouldn't mind taking up the demon life, but it's pretty hard to land a decent position in an already rather rigid hierarchy. That's why I mostly evil out of home. <laughs> Dark Wolf, Kitty Pendia is a place of coloring books and juice boxes. The Awoos are the residents of Kitty Pendia. Uh, so Chemisin and Awoo is kind of a... Uh, it's another name for a wolf or some other kind of uh, doggo. Possibly a pupper um, who uh, Awoos at things. King is soliciting uh, to join the True Good family instead of the Awoos. All right, let's hit the golden button and find out. Will uh, Will Romantic Day get the Warlock? Will Bubonic One get um, not a uh, Bard? Number eight. Number eight is a Ranger. And which kind of a Ranger? Odds or evens? Evens. Uh, that is going to be... Beastmaster. There we go. <clears throat> we 
are also going to get a D4 for a fighting style. We're going to put that here just off to the side. Roll 1D4. It lands on 3. That is going to be dueling. We'll make a note of that later. We'll, we'll clean it up. And then you're going to get a uh, terrain type that you're proficient in scouting. That is going to be another D8. 7 is going to put us in the swamps. So I'm just going to write down dueling and swamp, and you'll find out why in just a little bit. They're placeholders right now. Uh, Romantic, I am still playing Bloodlines. That is uh, that is true. Uh, in fact, we just cleared the Elizabeth Dane. Uh, we saw the uh, Ankaran sarcophagus. We reported back. And now I think we're getting ready to head to... Uh, no, 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 I'm sorry. I need to finish going through the Malkavian Psychologist's Mansion, which is quite a literal madhouse, and see what's happened there. Gidlock, can I describe the difference between a wizard and a sorcerer? Uh, yes, I can. Um, a sorcerer casts intrinsically as a part of who they are. Think why can Cyclops use an optic blast, right? He's a mutant. It's a part of who he is. So sorcerers cast magic because they are magical. Um, depending on, you know, which style or a belief or a background that you want to give your character, it's because you might have a drop of dragon blood flowing through you, or you could have been, a f you know, just you naturally develop these quote unquote mutant powers. Um, maybe you drank a potion, right? It's kind of like being exposed to gamma radiation. Uh, so that's why sorcerers cast off of charisma, right? How you present yourself, your appearance, who you are. A wizard, well, anyone theoretically could be a wizard. You just have to be literate uh, because it's learning the it's learning the magic words and the magic finger wiggles and it's learning about the components that go into spells. And uh, it's it's like the difference between um, if you have a biological propensity to be a good athlete, well, wizards are more like the math nerds. And I say that with with all due respect to math nerds. Um, so you can learn to be a wizard. Um, sorcerers, you, you just are a sorcerer. Now, can you multi-class and be a wizard sorcerer in D&D? Yeah. And that just means maybe you started out studying magic, something happened, and it awoke into natural magic inside of you. Um, but that's, that's the, the big difference. Um, wizards also, uh, tend to be very rigid in their casting. They get a huge selection of spells, but you cast it by the book. Sorcerers have the ability to manipulate magic because it's intrin it's uh it, yeah it's a part of them it's intrinsic to them. So you can modify your spells naturally with as a sorcerer whereas it you don't always have that option or it's more difficult to do or more limited in scope to modify spells as a wizard. Uh because you're casting them by rote memory or by you know by the instructions in your book. Whereas with a sorcerer you, your dump stat can be intelligence. You can be, you know, dumb as a brick, but you can produce spectacular fireballs. Um, so, Gidlock, does that answer your question? If not, let me know about what else you have confusion, and I'll be happy to clarify that for you. Cyclops versus Doctor Strange. Yeah, a bubonic, that, that is a good way of putting it, right? One is intrinsic, one is taught. King says the mechanical difference is that wizards rely on a database inside their spell books to have a selection of spells to prepare, while sorcerers always have their spells inside of them. In 5e, wizards get another ability from their spell specialization, and sorcerers have different abilities that modify the power of a spell, i.e. putting your thumb on the end of a hose to make it hit harder. Yes. <laughs> Norton swims to the shore. It's been nice, Lich. Find rest eventually. Shakes off the water. Ivalon, wizards learn through study. Sorcerers learn through experience. Uh, let's give some physical stats to our, our half-elf here. 
Oh, half elf, half elf. If I was half of an elf here, I would be. Four foot nine and we're adding 2d8 inches. We're adding 11 inches. Oh, we, that's what we added to our last character. Uh, so we have four foot 20, so five foot eight. We're gonna take that same 11 and multiply it by 2d4 pounds. For a weight modifier. Six. So we have 66 pounds that we are adding to 110. So 176 pounds. Now let's find out how older character is. If you're making a character at home, you don't have to do this because you probably already have a concept in your mind. But because we're completely randomly generating the characters we're doing things that's a little bit different and so we're taking these uh charts into consideration uh let's see a 69 on the chart is middle aged and we look at column four for a half elf being middle aged means being between 91 and 125 so we're going to manufacture a 35 sided die and roll it 28 Whoops, I clicked on the wrong thing here. Uh, so that's going to be 118 is middle-aged. There we go. Okay, we do not need this anymore, and now we can start bringing more definition to our character. Uh, more of a mechanical definition. Uh, King says, all right, don't pull me out. Just sail on into the unknown. Um, Norton says, good day to you, Lich. Much love. Um, King uses his broken leg as a rudder, his spare arm to hold uh, his cloak up as a sail. Boat mode engage, says King the Lich. <laughs> uh, bubonic one, Cyclops powers are intrinsic. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. The Cyclops and uh, Doctor Strange. Yes, I'm sorry, Cyclops from the X-Men. So, I mean, you could use any mutant, but being if you're a sorcerer, you have mutant powers that are a part of you. Um, yeah, Doctor Strange does cheat a little bit. He does rely on some magic items, which is important not to... No, I shouldn't... I uh, gotta be careful in what I say. Try not to have your magic items define who you are in D&D. Um, if you're talking about your character and you notice that you're saying, oh, I have this sword and this cloak does all this, and uh, Bobo, thank you very much. But if you say, yeah, I got this magic sword and, and my cape does this and oh, my boots, oh, you're describing yourself as a clothes rack, right? You, you might as well just be a closet. Well, who's your character? Well, he's like a he's like a, an elven wizard, but he has this sword and this cloak and these boots. Well, is, is, then is your character really just you know, uh, a medium for magic items? Or is your character you who is supported by the magic items? Uh, let's see. Um, all right, I caught up in chat. So, Bobo, welcome back. And are, are you 100% again, Bobo? Are you, like, are you all good? Or are you just, like, neutral evil? <laughs> Delcorn says, my character is the sum of his parts. That's a very good neutral answer. Romantic says, uh, what's cool about him is that he did get brain damage as a kid, so he's not able to control his mutant powers and always needs to wear, yeah, his, uh, like his rose quartz or whatnot. That kind of like helped disperse it. Without my magical items, I am nothing. Without me, they are nothing. Hmm. We had a lot of magical items that broke the game. I never used them. Yeah, oh, heck. Third, or you could argue even in fourth edition, where you were almost required. I, I mean, you could play with intrinsic bonuses, but it did account that you would get magic items. And then, of course, if you look in the care op forums, uh, your, your character was simply a medium for a combination of magic items that let you do just insane stuff in 4th edition. Uh, 
All right, we rolled that we were a criminal or spy. Alphabetically, there we go. It's right in the beginning. Um, if you uh, so, what you can do, uh, Gidlock, if you don't have a copy yourself, uh, you can do some learning and some basic character building on the website provided uh, right now. Um, if uh, the books and stuff, you can go to your local game store or comic store and they should have a player's handbook or you can purchase digital copies as well. If you want official copies. Um, so, you know, what, what you're seeing is it's difficult if I were to try and hold up physical books at the camera and say, Hey, this is where this is. Hey, this is where this is. Um, so I am using a, like a backup PDF to support the actual book that I have, um, but I mean you can you can look and and see where you can find them available. You can get them in the marketplace at D and D Beyond, or they do have free character building tools there, as well as some uh, rules and walkthroughs. And if you didn't want the full PHB, you could get the D and D starter kit. <clears throat> it's like twenty twenty five dollars. You get a set of dice, uh, the rules to play, and a starting adventure. Um, called the Lost Mine of Fandelver, although there's plenty of us who think there's more than one. So if you want to say the Lost Mines of Fandelver, you could do that too. <laughs> Bobo, yeah, I started training again, so I'm almost good, but it was a little harder than I expected. My skull had a little crack, apparently. Oh, yeah, uh, so Bobo, uh, for, for those of you who, uh, who weren't around for it, um, Bobo practices Muay Thai. And uh, had a little oopsie daisy accident uh, at a session and ended up with uh, um, mutant powers to shoot lasers out of his eyes. <laughs> no, it's all right, it's not quite like the like Cyclops we were just talking about the the X Man. Um, Bobo got a bit of a long term headache out of it, and is apparently almost fully recovered. Now you don't need to do anything like get a like a, a plate on your on your head or anything, do you, Bobo? Asked Wild, so at least I have a bonus action to make my cloak billow in a non-existent wind. Oh yeah, I, I like those little items out of Xanathar's. Those are fun. I'm bored. You're going to deck it again. If I go into the void again, oh boy. Hey, Norton. See? Norton, you, you put in the work. You, you ha So you had a bad day and you talked to a lich. And wouldn't you know, you exited the river, the lich sails on his merry way, and uh, sure enough, uh, you you stumble across something in uh, in the woods here. Perhaps it's some sort of karmic reward. Bubonic one, I have a crack in my skull, nearly healed, but sometimes it shifts. Ooh. Bobo, not just a small one, but I thought it was just a concussion at first, but it wasn't. I bet that's an official Muay Thai term, yeah. A little oopsie daisy. <laughs> yeah, oopsie daisy is is Thai for uh, um. Oh no. <laughs> so as a criminal, uh, we're gonna get uh, deception and stealth. We are also going to get one kind of gaming set as a proficiency. And Thieves' Tools. We will get some equipment, a crowbar. Uh, dark clothes with hood. And a belt pouch with 15 gold in it. Um, so what did you find? You want to roll for it? Uh, sure. Uh, Norton, uh, roll a 1d100. Bobo, but I've had some time away from my computer, so a lot of time for D&D. &D. Oh, so, so you, have you been getting into a module? Are you doing a homebrew game? 
All right, so Norton stops on a 12. Uh, Norton, what's your EXP? Well, 12 is within 100. Can you check your EXP for me, Norton? All right, so you are you are here. You were guaranteed at least a uh, you were guaranteed at least one magic item here. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll put you we'll put you here on. Magic item table A. So Norton, I want you to um, I want you to roll another percentile dice, one D one hundred. You got a 41. All right, so Norton, um, a, a little battered and bruised, uh, you make your way up on the shore of the river, and uh, you your, your claw on your foot kind of goes tink against something glass. And as you look down, uh, you see that there is a potion... Like a, a big round flask, and it is corked at the top and sealed with some wax. Um, and it has some kind of a uh, some kind of a liquid inside of it. Um, and according to the label, it uh, it'll make you feel a lot better. Uh, we do have a criminal contact, and our, as our background feature, this is a way for us to get messages back and forth, to use different underworld contacts. Um, you can do a lot with this feature. It's very, very handy. Uh, it smells like... Uh, am I good on my D&D &D lore? It smells like cinnamon and burnt ash. Uh, no, the river water is just your nose, Norton. <laughs> you might want to uh, kind of plug up one nostril and blow the other one out. Uh, we rolled number seven for our criminal specialty, and that is a pickpocket. Uh, Norton, apparently this was a trap. Someone jumps out of the bushes as you lean down to examine the bottle, slips and slides down into the river, unsuccessfully trying to attack a very curious knoll. Bye, romantic. <laughs> Well, Norton, I don't know if you have to worry about it. This person just slipped and fell in the river and is now going uh, going downstream along with the lich. Bobo says, my character took a critical kick to uh, the uh, hoo-hoos from uh, an orc. And uh, when it was my turn, I felt like my character wouldn't do uh, anything other than curl up and sling some nasty slurs at one guy. He got angry because I gave him, uh, is, I gave myself a disadvantage for a round. <laughs> but you were role playing, Bobo. You were role playing. <laughs> there you go, Norton. You have the potion. Quick, scamper away before someone else tries to take this clearly very precious liquid. And yes, yeah, cinnamon and some kind of ashes. It smells kind of smoky. That's right. So, King, if you're out there, someone else went sploosh in the river. 
You're meeting all kinds of people uh, just going for a little sail in the at the night in the night. Ah, uh. <laughs> oh, the things that happen. Okay, we can fill in. All right, so we haven't determined yet. Are we a criminal or a spy? Let's see what his personality says and what would be the best course of action. <laughs> You just gave up and float uh, and drift down the river? Okay. Well, I, I guess uh, King Von Ale is going to be pulling ahead because he uh, went into boat more uh, boat mode lich form. Uh, but we have uh, King Von Ale and Romantic Day are just now drifting down the river. Bobo, what's your thoughts on the uh, the other players like really upset at you that you get that is okay to do? Or should I listen to this guy? It's your character. Play your character as you will. It, just because someone's like, you didn't take advantage of every opportunity ever. So what? Are you role-playing and having fun? Is your DM also getting into it? Because maybe your DM will give you a bit of a karmic reward for good role-playing later. Can the bottle float? Uh, sure. It's stoppered up. We'll say it can float. Oh no! <laughs> so meanwhile, in Kitty Pendia, uh, although you you got to put like a band aid or something on you, uh, Dark Wolf. You, you, like, do you have a band aid? Do you have like the 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 bandages on your head or like the crossed out band aids? Or is like one the like one of your toe beans here? Is that uh, is that covered up? My DM was la laughing his arse off uh, when he asked me what I would do. See, then then you, you're you fine, Bobo. You're golden in that situation. You role-played with it. Yeah, you did something you didn't have to, but you felt it was appropriate. And so if this other guy's getting mad, then why? It, 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 just tell him there's other things to worry about. I'm having fun in role-playing my character who just got hit. What do you want him to do? Hey, thanks for the info. Got to get some sleep. Toss in a uh, follow. Oh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Gidlock. Check you out tomorrow. I'll see you tomorrow. We begin at 11 p.m. Eastern, and uh, we'll keep doing creative stuff. You can ask questions and just follow along. I hope, uh, Gidlock, I hope you've enjoyed the role play going on in the channel, too. It's been a really fun and, uh, and, uh, good, and it's a good night for it. There's the follow. Thank you, Gidlock. And thank you for participating in naming the PC. Norton unstops the bottle, drinks it, and then places a note in the bottle that says, Thanks, whoever you were, appreciated. Plugs the bottle and places it in the current. There it is. Thank you. Welcome. All right. So, Norton, um, your body, any injuries on your body uh, slowly begin to close up, and you're feeling a whole lot better now. And you, I guess you write it in what, abyssal? So you write out, you, you scratch out a note in an abyssal, I guess. You throw it in and you go, bloop, 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 bloop. And it starts floating down the river. Well, his character lost an arm because I didn't do anything for a round. You role played, though. You're having fun. It'll make for a good story. Romantic day. Yeah, I agree. Min maxers are the worst. Always give yourself disadvantage in order to subvert the bloated challenge rating, in my opinion. I've never met a challenge rating that didn't deserve bad play. <laughs> that's that's a very interesting philosophy. All right, what are his personality traits? Number six, I don't pay attention to the risks in a situation. Never tell me the odds, says Han Solo. And three... The first thing I do in a new place is note the locations of everything valuable or where such things could be hidden. Ah, very perceptive. Very, he, he looks around. He scans. 
Um, but he doesn't have like the, the the foresight. I think he's just in the moment kind of a guy. Ideals number five. People. I'm loyal to my friends, not to any ideals, and everyone else can take a trip down the sticks for all I care. His bond is number four. I will become the greatest thief that ever lived. And finally, his flaw is number one. When I see something valuable, I can't think about anything but how to steal it. Very com And he's a pickpocket, too. Yeah, I wrote a thank you note. I don't know to who, though. Perhaps a previous owner or a universal message. So Norton is, uh, Norton is uh, paying it forward with a, uh, a thank you note. Bobo says, well, I like, to, I, I like to RP, and I know for a fact that times I have taken an unlucky kick uh, to the uh, sensitive area, I am very, I, I myself stunned for more than a minute. <laughs> yeah, that's if you aren't, like, rolling around or throwing up or something. Ugh. That was, uh, yeah. Well, so you're basing it on real life experiences. You, you will have immersed yourself in your character, Bobo, <laughs> for better or worse. Aha, Tin Cat. That's a <laughs> that's exactly the question. We can customize it and have him pursue a singular goal. Maybe he's just braggadocious. And he just says, yes, I want to be the greatest thief. And so if he accomplishes something, that counts as towards being a great thief. But if he's not so good at something else, well, I, I wasn't going for the... All the great thieves are the, are the speedy ones or, the, or something along those lines. It, yeah, it could be. He could be like a Lupin the Third. There we go. Yep. So there's a little... That's, that's, uh, that, that is very adorable uh, in its own right, even though it is also sad. But this is, in fact, a sad awoo. Look at this. Norton is feeling good. The bandits are down. There's a Pokemon reference for you. All right, we have his personality. We have, uh, hmm, so would he make for, like, a, a spy? Uh, nah, I don't think so. If he's, he's more of a criminal, I think, from his background and from what we're digging. The, the overall campaign theme I think we're aiming for. I keep picturing that I keep picturing King's Lich just like floating down the river as well. And then whatever happened to Romantic Days just sort of like, eh, I guess I deserve this and is <laughs> So you have like King in the lead, and then you have Romantic Day, and then there's just this bottle with a very friendly note bobbing uh, you know bobbing in the current. Uh you can go to the Underdark Norton. Now careful, it is higher risk, higher reward. Let's go up to races and go to half elf. We increase our charisma by two, so I'm going to make a note here. We already have our age alignment. Our size is medium. We do get 60 feet of dark vision by being a half elf. Our speed is 30 feet, giving us 15 climb, 15 swim. Uh, and we do get Fey Ancestry. You have advantage on saving throws against being charmed, and magic doesn't put us to sleep. We are proficient in two skills. Uh, so I guess I'll just write this here. Um, half Elf 2x skill. Languages, we get common. Elven and one more mystery. Come on now. 
And that does it for being a half elf. Now we will go over to Ranger. Collapse this, go down to classes. We are a level four Ranger, so we're only worried about what's up here. Dark Wolf loses the Magic Lance and is now... So, Dark Wolf, it's almost as if, like, Norton's bad luck or bad day has somehow, like, transferred onto you. And he is having this, this like, uptick of, uh, of challenge and joy. Uh, Norton the Knoll found meaning in his life by speaking to someone who is not alive. Estwild, I was accused of being a min-maxer because my Eldritch Knight has an owl familiar to give himself or someone else advantage on one attack. This is a game where people have bard instruments that can fly and go invisible multiple times per day. And, and Estwild, you know, it, it also your owl can be destroyed. I think your owl has, what, one hit point? Something like that? Um, I mean, so... Don't take that too personally. Just laugh it off and be like, sure, I'm broken. <laughs> Hopefully with a little bit more tact than that, Estwild. Bobo, yeah, I have more fun giving myself disadvantage at times. Most people think it's not fun uh, for everyone. Again, though, you know, if your DM is enjoying it and you're enjoying it and it's not... I mean, obviously, if this is like the super big whatever and you're just saying, eh, for no reason, I'm going to take this advantage, well, that might be weird or problematic. But if you're going with the story, you're having fun, and your DM's like, yeah, that's cool, then I wouldn't worry about it, Bobo. As well, I would think it's not the help action, but the flyby ability that the owl has. Thus, your owl's not really in any danger. Romantic Day, I have been kicked out of groups for not min-maxing and playing a lot of disadvantages. I had an entire group once yelling at me to put armor on my Barbarian. Wow, really romantic? Well, but but then again, like, did you know you were going into a min-max game? Because some people like playing, you know, I want the Dark Souls of D&D. Like, it has to be super tough mode. And if you're not optimized, then why are you playing with us? So, I, I don't know. I guess I could see if you're getting into that. But if, if you weren't told that this is like a min-max fight-heavy campaign, then that was kind of rude. Ah, oh, so Real Dorgrim is saying because it's flyby and not aid. Romantic day, but honestly, my barbarian once double critted his daily ability in 4e and did like 140 damage at, uh, at level 8 to uh, 11, and it was insane. Yeah, whew. talk about number. That, that 4e was uh, it wasn't the numbers game. Or it was a numbers game, but it was way more organized in my opinion than um, previous editions numbers games were, which is partially why I like fourth edition. Bobo says, it's not like I don't do it for no reason, but if I get kicked in the, uh, hoo -ha, or my character is drunk, I usually tell the DM to give me, like, a minus three. Yeah, it, you know, like, disadvantage is a good catch-all for that kind of a thing. Romantic, well, 4E had a lot of gameplay-like elements, so I get it. We played on a grid. Uh, well, hopefully, did it ruin friendships? Hopefully it didn't ruin friendships. Uh, as rangers, we are a D10 hit die, and we get four of them because we're level four. Light armor, medium armor, and shields, oh my. We are also going to be you know, proficient with simple and martial weapons. No tool proficiencies. Strength and dex are, are, are saving throw proficiencies. And we get to choose three. Animal handling. 
Athletics, Insight, Investigation, Nature, Perceptions. Uh, we already have Stealth. Survival. Uh, Dark Wolf says, did anyone watch Dark and Dicey yesterday? It was on the D&D Twitch. I want to say if he is, um, if he scopes out a place that he goes to, uh, I I definitely think that perception should be one of his, uh, one of his uh, three. Probably athletics. Also, I don't know. Maybe perception, investigation, athletics. Right, athletics to climb and to, and to you know, to get into places, um, perception to look around, and investigation to come up with a plan on how to steal. No, it was actually people that you didn't like. It's a long story, but we played over voice, uh, voice chat, and they were very rules focused, and um, well, I'll just say rules focused, so it wasn't too committed. I may have been a bit, uh, well. I mean, look, if you're admitting that you may have antagonized it too, eh, if there's no love lost, you know, you know I always hate hearing about, you know, that there, if there's grief at a table, but you know what? You're alive, you're living another day, you're still playing D&D, &D, and you know what? If you can reflect back on it, Romantic, and, uh, and say, eh, you know, I was dumb, or they were dumb, or all of us were dumb, and now we're not dumb, then we're better for it. Plus, you are giving cautionary tales to people who may just be lurking here as first-timers. And they're like, oh, well, what happens in situations like that? And you're, you're giving an example. Dorgrim says, I once played a Trinity game and I was RPing the fact that my telepath ran out of daily uses. I said he started to get tired. Other players questioned my actions and I had to literally call them out saying... You ever heard of role playing? Oh. Uh, it's it's important to know the group that you're getting into. Uh, the first episode was last night and it was very fun to watch. They had a villainous slash anti hero party. I think you put a link up to that, didn't you, Dark Wolf? Um, so if if you're recommending it, I unless they didn't record their session, we could all go back and watch their VOD uh, if we wanted to see what was going on. Literally seconds in, a Yanti pureblood started a cult with impressionable children. <laughs> Suddenly, somewhere, King's senses are ringing. I, I don't know, Bloody Torchic. Eltrion is back. I just finished posting an application for a game on Friday night. It is only supposed to be for a few sessions, and I think having something to compare my other experiences with would be helpful. I agree, uh, Eltrion. It was pretty sad, says Dorgrim, because the group was known for heavy roleplay. And they were calling you out on being... T yeah, that's... How, how did they respond to your prompt, Dorgrim? Let's give him investigation, perception, and... Uh, what was the other one? Athletics. We are going to get some equipment next. Uh, let's see. We're going to go... We're dueling. Let's be a strength-based ranger. So we will take the scale mail. Uh, sure, we'll take two short swords. We'll take a Dungeoneer's pack, since he's used to breaking and entering. And a longbow with a quiver, 20 arrows. Dorgrim, there was silence. Trinity was the first release as Aeon had to change the name because Aeon Flux was on the air at the time. Oh, yeah, I remember. 
on uh, on MTV's Liquid Television. I remember watching Aeon Flux. There is a VOD for it. It has voice actors in it that I'm fans of. Nathan Sharp, uh, Nate Wants to Battle, and Christina V, to name two. Ah. Got some star power to that game. Well, it seems like you got your point across, Dorgrim. All right, by being a ranger, we are going to get at level one a favored enemy. We can take one type of creature or two types of humanoids. Ah, uh, let's see. Uh, da -da -da -da. Aberrations, beasts, celestials, constructs, dragons, elementals, fey, fiends, giants, monstrosities, oozes, plants, or undead. I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna leave this blank for right now, and we'll come back to that. Natural Explorer is where we're getting Swamp. We're uh, very good at tracking in that type of terrain. We'll also be getting Fighting Style. Dueling. When you're wielding a melee weapon in one hand and no other weapons, you gain a plus two bonus to damage rolls with that weapon. We will get some spell casting. We'll come back to that after we fill in stats. And we will get a Ranger Archetype and Primeval Awareness. We can spend a, a Ranger spell slot to kind of get like a radar burst of natural activity around us. Okay, as a beast master, uh, we are going to get Ranger's Companion. And is trained to fight alongside you. Choose a beast that is no larger than medium. So we'll have to decide what kind of an animal from a swampy area would this beast master have as a companion? Okay, nice and quick. He's only level four. We are making him strength. Oh, and we can put one into something else. Maybe we'll put one into... Uh... What if we put our one into... Let's see, we have Charisma, Wisdom, and Intelligence. Well, if we put our bases into 15... Fourteen, thirteen, twelve, ten, eight. And if we do that, we can put a bonus into. I guess our strength right there. Putting that to a 16 to start. And this at a 14 charisma. Or instead, what if we did this? If we had a 15 strength and we put the 1 instead into... No, no, no. Let's put it in here. And then what we can do with our ASI to help set us up... Why don't we bring our Wisdom up 1 to 14, and we'll put our Strength to 17 to get ready for a bump on the next one. That's going to give us 2 Charisma, 2 Wisdom, minus 1 Int, 0 Con, 2 Dex, and 3 Strength.
Dark Wolf says, so I thought about it because drinking was mentioned. Anyway, DM had them con save when drinking. Two of them failed with the nat one. It was hilarious. So are they kind of stumbling, bumbling? Do they just get disadvantage imposed on them? What happened, Dark Wolf? Ultron, I'd forgotten that Anne Flux had a movie come out. Yeah, it had a live action. I need to read up and see if it's worth a watch. The The animation was very interesting. Then again, look, on, on MTV's Liquid Television, you got a lot of interesting stuff. You had uh, you had Aeon Flux, you had The Max, M-A-X-X. -X. The Max was a very interesting cartoon. Oh, what else? Beavis and Butthead were on Liquid Television also. And... There was one with people that looks like it, like the background for everything was Note Cards. I forget the name of that cartoon show. Uh, you also had a puppet show called Syphil and Ollie. That was very... I, I laughed. That was a very fun and interesting uh, show to watch. S-I-F-L and O-L-L-I-E. Syphil and Ollie. Uh, Trinity was based on uh, the storyteller system, uh, like uh, White Wolf stuff. Um, you had no idea that WW had a superhero game. Uh, Bobo says, if I recall, Anne Flux was not the best movie I've seen, but it's worth watching. I might not watch it many times, but it's worth watching one time. You know, I, if you have something based on a cartoon, especially one kind of as far out as that one was, it'd be very difficult to get a, uh, a live action around it. Ivalon still doing characters. Uh, kind of interested in seeing you tinker with Roll20 later. Yep, that will be uh, Thursday. The Max. Yes, Dorgrim. Oh, is Stick Figure Theater Romantic? Okay, thank you for remembering. At level 4, our uh, proficiency bonus is still 2. That's going to give us a 5 saving throw and a 5 athletics. A four dex and a four stealth with a two acrobatics and sleight of hand. Zero con. One investigation, but a minus one in the others. Two, 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 and four. Two, four, two, two, two. Eltron, I love the Max. I drew a few characters based on his appearance for kicks. Syphil and Ollie uh, reminded me of a couple of my friends. <laughs> yeah. And if you had someone who was really out there, then they had uh, they had their buddy Chester, who had the big sunflower eyes, if you remember that. Evelyn, I agree. I had the same feelings about Gem and the Holograms live action. Oh yeah, there was one of that too. Good point, Evelyn. Dark and... Uh, although I think I liked the He-Man live-action movie, and the, I think they just called it Masters of the Universe. I liked that one. That could just be Little Maddie talking, but I thought that one was was uh, was done well. Dark Wolf one ended up sideways on the floor, then that one ended up uh, ended up throwing up, turned into a horse uh, as the druid, and then the party got a cleric to heal the druid. But he didn't have enough for both, so later on, the remaining drunk guy distracted guards with some disorderly conduct. Yes, uh, they are truly outrageous, Evelyn. Truly, truly, truly outrageous. At level 1, they get their full 10 hit points, and for every other level, after 1, so for 3, right, it's a level 4 character, half plus 1 is 6, plus every level, therefore 4, times zero because that's our con mod so that kind of washes out we have 18 plus 10 so we have 28 hit points your initiative is based on your dex because it is a dex check remember that if you're a bard and you have jack of all trades because that applies passive perception is 14 because it's 10 plus your perception modifier he graduates from having a bunch of numbers for a name to actually getting a name his short swords, he's attacking with strength, so this is going to be a plus five. Longbow is going to be a plus four. 1d6 plus three piercing. 1d8 plus two piercing, because that is dex base, not strength. We're going to get two more skills, by the way, for being a half elf. 
what would we give ourselves, right? If he's, I don't pay attention to the risks, never tell me the odds. The first thing I do in a place is note the locations of everything of value. I'm loyal to my friends, not to any ideals. And everyone else can take a trip. I'll become the greatest thief that ever lived. So maybe we give him a little bit more flexibility here and we'll give him acrobatics training. And uh, he's a pickpocket. We're going to go sleight of hand also. Masters of the Universe didn't have anything to do with the IP, but it was a great 80s movie. Well, it was still He-Man based romantic, unless I'm confusing something. How did the DM deal with the drunkenness in your game, Dark Wolf? It blacked out and went under, under DM control. I like throwing the poison condition on drunk characters. Um, and, you know, a lot of mods might just say that they have disadvantage to anything that they do. I like infecting my players in the first session with the plague. Well, that sets a timer. <laughs> that, that puts a fire underneath them. The Merry Mercenaries is auto-hosting uh, with uh, six viewers. Well... Merry Mercenaries, thank you for the auto-host, uh, for you if you're a part of this, and if any of you who came over, um, welcome. We are building our second character for the night, and talking about, uh, what do you do with drunk PCs? <laughs> you know, it, it turns into uh, the, the old sea shanty, what do you do with a drunken player? <laughs> Early in the session. <laughs> Okay, now that we have this, we can calculate a couple other things. We are casting off of Wisdom, so our attack is going to be plus 4, and we add 8 to that for the DC, so that's 12. We are going to be getting... We know 3 spells, and all 3 are first level. There we go. None of them are cantrips, however. Uh, we can come down here. We get level one. And level two, we get our third spell known. And we're sitting at three. We get a rain, whoop, <laughs> ranger. We cast off of wisdom. Twelve plus four. And nothing really doing over here. And we do get to fill in page four, which is the companion. So, what kind of a companion would a ranger have? Hmm, hmm, hmm. A boar could be interesting. Oh, maybe a bat. In Dark and Dicey, the players acted it out. Sometimes advantages or disadvantages were tossed in. Ah, Romantic looked it up, Dark Wolf. And uh, I've had one case of drunkenness in the game I run, and it was a nat one, so immediately was wasted, acted out, and later passed out. <laughs> Ooh, a constrictor snake might be a good swamp creature. Crocodile, and eh, that's a little too high. You could have a frog. The frog can breathe air and water part of its movement without running... It can long jump. Yeah, well, it could do some things, but... Hmm. Mm, giant spiders too high level. Could have a mastiff. Or a mule. Ooh, a, a ranger and his trusty mule. The mule might be a good one. Kind of slogging through the, uh, kind of slogging through the mud. Scout. 
Skeleton, Sprite, Tiger, Wolf, Zomble, or a Warhorse. You know what? Let's give him let's give him a trusty mule. Go has a speed of 40 feet, AC of 10, 11 hit points. Fourteen strength, ten dex, thirteen con, two int, ten wisdom, and five charisma. So minus three, zero, one, one, zero, and two. Passive perception is ten. No languages. Two D eight plus two healing surges. Well, not healing surges. Hit dice derp. Um, it does get hooves. Hooves. Plus two to hit. One D four plus two bludgeoning. Beast of Burden counts as a large creature for the purpose of determining its carrying capacity. And sure-footed whenever the mule would be knocked prone it stays ooh, stays on its feet if it succeeds on a DC 10 dexterity saving throw. And there we go. It just needs a name. And so does our ranger, actually. El Trent says, Dark and Dicey sounds interesting. I think I'll give it a uh, gander sometime. Hey, well, Dark Wolf, you're getting... You're you're getting people who can uh, can watch alongside you. Good, good, good. Oh, the one who didn't get healed from his drunkenness was an oathbreaker paladin, and it was his first time drinking. <laughs> so that's what. Uh... Oh, so what level are they starting at then? I, I presume at least three then, right? Or is he a paladin who will become an oathbreaker, and they're starting at level one? Initiative is plus zero. Um, so our carrying capacity is... It's normally 15 times your, uh, your strength score, but if you're large, it's twice that. So we actually have 30 times 14, so that's 4 times 0 is 0. That's 12. We come and put down the 0... That is zero, and that is three. So we have 420 pounds as the carrying capacity, just straight up. It can push, pull, or drag more, like if it has a heavy cart behind it. But you can put 420 pounds on this thing's back, and it's like, hee-haw. There was a game that came out recently that takes place in. Oh yeah, yeah, Kingdom Come. It's a it's a historical. Um, it is in Eastern Europe. Oh, where is it? 
Ha, I was going to say Barovia. That is that is not the right word. No, no, no. It's over, um, not Belgium. I think it's even further east. Um, is it around Poland? Oh. I think it takes place around Poland. But yeah, I, I know the game you're talking about. Um... You could get blackout drunk, wake up in the middle of nowhere next to some uh, next to some creature. So that was pretty interesting. When I played it, I RP'd as a very pious Christian, so I didn't drink, gamble, or have sex. Yes, you can do that with the Wash Maidens. Uh, and that was a huge mistake because I missed out on a lot of content. Well, not necessarily romantic. So you played it one way, and now you can go through and replay it a different way. You know, it's, it's like saying, you know, playing Infamous. You go through and you play as a bad guy, you know, as, uh, as infamous and not famous. You know, you could say, well, I miss out on content. Well, the game is meant for you to go through and try different combinations. Hey, Donald McGoober, good to see you back. Uh, these are what you must sacrifice to save a life of service. I respect you for role-playing something that seems pretty boring or challenging. Um, yeah, for for sticking to that like that lawful good or you know concept. Oh, bo oh, is it Bohemia? Okay. Uh, it was technically their third session because they did two practice sessions off screen, but the DM does recap it at the beginning. Gotcha, Dark Wolf. Yeah, I I knew it was it was because uh, this is about the time that. Um, you know that uh, that Constantinople is rising and is challenging Rome as the center of the uh, of the Catholic, you know, the 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 faith, the empire of faith, and uh, it does weave in a lot of uh, a lot of uh, history and uh, religious history into it. All right, so we have our second character of the evening, uh, our second random character for this week's uh, campaign. Uh, concept awesome what i'm gonna do i'm gonna take another break i'm gonna refresh myself get like a, a big pitcher of water or something and i'll come back and hey it's open time um donald if you wanted to make that character like we were talking about in uh in vampire mm, pardon me hiccup um we can do that if we can just talk about whatever role play scenarios have come up it's it's free and open time uh we've put in the quote-unquote work of making our two characters and that's, and we had an awesome conversation along the way for both of them. Uh, so yeah, just hang around five or ten minutes. I'll be back and we'll get into part three. <laughs> 